Keep him coming. Yep, there you go. That's another one toughness. Keep him coming. There we go. You're not going to like this next play, my friend. <sighs> this next play is really going to upset you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. What's going on, everybody? Today, we are talking about a deck that I am actually stomping my way through Platinum with, metaphorically and physically. Today, we're talking about a Gruel list, but not your typical aggressive Gruel list. Today, I decided I wanted to take some of the biggest, nastiest, and baddest creatures in all of the Gruel color scheme and jam them into one deck. <laughs> and uh, this is how it turned out. So before we jump into this list though and start talking about it and breaking this thing down, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I just ask if you take one moment to do so. It's a free way to help support the channel. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll be notified whenever we post a video, which is three times a week. All right, let's talk about it. So this deck is pretty easy to win with. It's, it's actually very easy to win with um, because it has a very simple concept. Try to ramp you know take care of the board if there's little creatures and then eventually play things that are so big and do so much things that your opponent just can't stop it starting it all off i kind of built this deck around i wanted to play quartz wood crasher this card right here is a trample six six for five drop already very good but basically whatever uh it deals damage or any creature of yours with trample deals damage you create an xx dinosaur and that creature's power and toughness are equal to the damage that got through. Well, that's very, very powerful, especially if everything has trample. And if we have things like Embercleave, that, you know, we can hit the opponent twice with a 7 7 Quartzwood Crasher, it can get ugly. By the way, little disclaimer we did that <laughs> um we also have elder gargaroth another big trampler 6-6 six six that does really great things um you know we have a flying haste gold span dragon because it's incredible and it has ways to generate us extra mana we have questing beast which also has haste it's another four four that's hard to deal with and it does a lot of extra text here as you can see it, it hits planeswalkers you know it's got death touch it's vigilance it's it's powerful. <laughs> so now you can start to see this develop into like, okay, you've got all these huge, really nice creatures. Where is the, you know, trample synergies like on the Questing Beast and Goldspan Dragon? Well, the synergy is right here. Garuk's Uprising, one of our absolute engines of the deck. We run three of these. It's an enchantment that if we play it and we have a creature out on the battlefield with power of four or greater, we get to draw a card. But what's great about it is if it's on the battlefield and we play a creature with power of four or greater, we get to draw a card. So. Um, things like Goldspan Dragon and Questing Beast and everything above draws us a card. Well, the other best part about this card is it gives all your creatures trample. So now all of these now become synergistic with Quartzwood Crasher. Um, and if you stack these, you get to draw multiple cards per creature hitting the battlefield. Um, some other creatures we have in the deck are Garug's Harbinger, which not only triggers you know the uh, Grooks uprising to draw a card it also has some flavor text on here as well it can't be just destroyed by black uh you know spells because it's hex proof from black and then if it hits your opponent uh you get to look into your library and reveal uh you know creature cards which is really nice so um then you've got things like clothes right here clothes is another thing where if it hits the battlefield with full seven loyalty which is not hard to do because we have things that generate double pips to our devotion as you can see here double green double green double red double green two red one green so this is going to get to seven loyalty easily and then if we play this late game it comes down as a four or five creature triggering the draw effect as well and then we have rada rada is a nice little combat trick i like rada a lot and it made the cut because not only can it find us land which is an extra card on top of our deck to play so basically it extends our hand by one in some cases um rod is nice because of its ability down here at the end whereas you if you pay six mana uh rod gets plus xx to the end of turn where it's the number of lands you control so if you swing in for a three three your opponent sees it as a non-threat and then you you know combat trick boom activate that ability they didn't read the card you just hit them for 13 13 instead of 3 3 uh you can win games that way and i have done that it was a really really nice and then uh just some extra cards here for some spice we have cultivate we run three of so we can get to our gold span drag this this entire row of creatures we can get to in one turn earlier if we use our cultivate which is nice obviously i talked about the embercleave 
But here, here's one of the MVPs of the deck. After creating this deck, I thought to myself, wow, very, very powerful. But man, are we bad against Mono Red. Mono Red just runs through us because they, they get their creatures down so quickly. By turn four, they're already swinging in for six different creatures and going so wide. And they've got us down to our last legs. They're going to win the game every single time because we don't get a creature out until turn three uh, in almost every case. So Cinderclasm is really nice because not only does it destroy almost all of Mono Red's creatures with a little bit of a kicker action here, it doesn't kill our creatures. All of our creatures are three toughness or higher. So Cinderclasm has no effect on our creatures. So it was the perfect sweeper to put in this deck. Um, I know I've been putting it in a lot of my decks and you guys might think I'm a huge fanboy for this card. It just happens to work a lot in, a, in most of my builds. Uh, Cinderclasm is just too perfect not to have in this deck. It's, it's the only way to beat mono red with this deck honestly if it doesn't have cinderclasm you can't mono red's gonna get up underneath you every single time anyways this has been a little bit of a longer intro than normal so i'm gonna go ahead and kick it on over to the gameplay footage now and then we'll see you guys right back here at the end for some final thoughts enjoy peace if you're in the market for magic accessories like sleeves or play mats, then be sure to check out your play mat for some great products. They have a large library of artwork to choose from, but if you want more personalized artwork, you can fully customize your own sleeves or play mats with your own images. I personally went with the Soul Eater, but the possibilities are endless. So visit yourplaymat.com. Be sure to use the link in this description below to not only help support the channel, but get 10% off your order. Now, Back to the video. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. I'm actually going to be playing a deck today that I didn't play test at all yet, which is pretty rare for me. So wish me some luck here. I put together a Stompy Gruel deck. I think it'll be pretty cool. I think it'll work really nicely. Definitely keeping that. Definitely keeping that. All right, go and throw that down. Say go. Sorry, very thirsty. Well, I'm glad that I put in the Cinderclasms, that's for sure. Very happy about that. Could be very helpful here against Mono Red. So the whole reason it's in the deck is because of uh, these fast, aggressive style decks that can get up underneath me quickly. Alright, well, I think, I mean, is there... There's no reason not to play it now, so... Let's do it now. Obviously, we can get more value out of it down the road, but I think playing it now is just fine because we're going to be playing Garruk's Uprising first, followed up by a Questing Beast, so should be able to take the lead here pretty easily. Um, on second thought, I might need to Cultivate here. Cultivate might be the best option because if that if I had top deck to land, we would be doing that play I just discussed, up, Uprising into another creature here. But there's a good chance we don't top deck another land, and then we have to play Cultivate and can't play a creature next turn. I think the creature supersedes me actually casting another spell this turn. I think we can wait on the Uprising. All right. Facing uh, some hasty stuff here. They get uh, oh, they get a gold span off the top. Okay, a gold span. This does have vigilance, right? So I might as well play this as opposed to the gold span, so I could deal a little bit of damage and then, uh, you know, keep back a blocker as well. So that's gonna be the play. Opponents gonna be able to play an Embercleave if, if they have it they're gonna be able to play an Embercleave here, so Nope, they're going for another robber. I like that All right, I like this very much Only four mana available could be a Rimrock Knight infuriate. Oh Okay infuriate I see Gold span dragon it is. No attacks. Leaving back some blockage. Uh Garuk's Uprising is gonna be nice. Wow, another robber. They are just flowing with the robbers of the rich. Holy cow. And we know that's probably another pump spell, it looks like. I'm just playing catch up right now, and it's annoying. I, I should I should have saved. I should have saved the um, Cinderclasm. I'm regretting not saving that. 
Alright, let's play this first. Then the uprising. We, sh we should still be more than fine, but... We should be just fine. Our creatures are definitely going to outsize their creatures. And uh, we're going to be able to draw a bunch of cards over and over again. So, feeling pretty good about this. They got three mana left to open, which means they get my Harbinger. Oh, that's so annoying. That's about as annoying as it gets right there. Get my own Harbinger down. See what we get off the top of our deck here. Gargaroth. Don't mind if I do. No attacks. Leaving back blockers is all we can do. Alright, Faceless Haven. I love seeing that. That's a useless card for at least a turn. They're going to trade everything with me. That seems really odd, but okay. I don't mind losing this to this. No Castle of Embrith, huh? Just going to send them, huh? Just send them right to their doom? Sending them all to their doom. I know I could have pumped Rada here, but it's all good. Gargaroth is about to come down, which is going to give us a ton of life gain, so. Also going to get a card with the Harbinger. Or Uprising, I'm sorry. The Uprising. And the Harbinger, actually. The Harbinger is going to hit. That's a GG's, though, man. Gruel Stompy coming in hot. Out of the gates. All right. That was a fairly decent first game. Went pretty smoothly. I'm glad it was, uh, I'm glad we had the Cinderclasm, though. That could have been bad if we didn't have the Cinderclasm, but this hand right here is pretty sweet as long as we can get to this Cultivate. Let's go. Let's go. We've got options. We have a lot of three drops. The more three drops, the merrier. That's pretty much our smallest drop other than the Cinderclasm, so if we can get a handful of three drops, we will definitely take it. We just got to make sure we top deck the land, and I'm only keeping this because we are going second, so... If we were going first, I would highly consider maybe mulliganing this hand. It would be tough, but... We hit the land drop. Let's go. And it's a green source, which is the one I wanted more because now it opens the door for Harbinger if we want to. And they are on Orzhov. It might be a good idea to just go Harbinger here. Might be a good idea. They haven't played anything on turn two, so... They're playing into our game style, which is a little bit later game. Okay, they're going Eidolon. They're an Eidolon deck, huh? Okay. Well, looks like they're giving us time. Like I said, I think we take this time to set up. We might as well. We might as well. Got enough to hit the Cinderclasm for two now. We can, we can kick it, which is great. We have the two red sources, three mana total. Might even throw down a Grook's Harbinger too. We, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see what our opponent ends up doing here. I think Gargaroth does the play here just because it's so big that with two mana, they're not gonna be able to do anything about it because they're running things like Moga's Favor. They're running things like Meyer's Grasp, things of that nature. And they're gonna need a couple of different things to, to hit this and, and get rid of it. So I do think it's gonna survive at least a round, so. All right, so they do have a Myers Grasp then. So what's going to end up happening here is I block, right? If I block this, I take three damage. This dies, they draw a card, and then they Myers Grasp this to death. Is that something I care too much about? I think that's fine. I still think we... Mm, no, no blocks. They can have it. We can gain that three life back just by attacking with the Gargaroth, so... They can have it. I'm not going to walk into it. I'm not going to do it. We kill the Eidolon with these. That would have been a big mistake had I had I done that. All right, and now that they've done, uh, you know, they went and, and did that to try to find the mana, because you know they're hurting for mana right now. That's why they did that. I'm going to play the uh, Clothis next turn. Absolutely, because we can start eating up their, their graveyard, which is exactly what we want here. So they can't do things like that, you know what I'm saying? Let's go and gain a little bit of life. I I'm afraid our opponent got us down pretty low there, so I want to make sure we can get back in here and back into this game here. 
Six damage is quite a bit, especially because it has trample. I'm pretty sure we're we're in the driver's seat at this point. I don't think I don't think our opponent has much for us at this point in the game. We're, we've got so much mana to work with. We're about to start eating up their graveyard, which is one of the worst nightmares for them right now. We have a six six vigilance creature out here just gaining us life every turn. Yeah, this is gonna this is getting ugly for our opponent quickly. We're almost able to turn on our clothes soon here too. A couple of more things from our hand get down on the battlefield. We got to clothe this alive as a creature. Probably going to see an Eidolon come down here and then, uh, you know, followed by an enchantment of sorts. Oh, Banishing Light. What are they going to take, though? This is this is key. See, they're taking Gargaroth. I think that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake. Clothis eats up your graveyard. Shuts down your little plan here. All right, I thought for sure I did give me more targets with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the one and hold the L on that one because I could have played Garuk's Uprising, but instead I held priority for other things. All right, let's see if we can find a land off the top here. We sure can. Looking good right now. Looking good. Rada has trample, by the way, so I can do a little combat trick here. I can actually swing in, and then on, uh, you know, defenses being declared, I can pump it, becoming huge. Dead weight, all right. Only one mana left open, and it's a white source, so we know it's not going to be another dead weight. That's good. All right, that's gone. Just eating up their enchantments, which is exactly what we want. Just destroying their game plan top to bottom here. All right, let's draw a card. We know what it's going to be, right? So let's draw a card. Harbinger has Hexproof from Black, which is great. Again, destroys their game plan, which is the goal here. Cultivates. We're trying to get a land on top of the on top of the stack here, but all right, no land feels good. We are going to attack here. We're going to leave Rada behind because that would be silly. It would just die and then uh, they would draw a card. Can't have that. But a four or five indestructible creature seems pretty good. If they only saw our hand, I'm sure I'm sure they would scoop. <laughs> like we have three cinderclasms just waiting to go. Waiting to just ruin their day. Oh, an Erebos, huh? Indestructible creature as well. Uh you whenever you, whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. Sacrifice a creature? Okay, that's pretty cool. I should probably try to make a deck with Erebos in it. That's an interesting one. All right, well, GG's took that one down. All right, well, we're just running through opponents right now with this deck, which is kind of how I, I figured it would turn out. This is one of those decks when you put them together, you're like, oh, this is a this is a gold. This is gold right here. This is perfect. And Gruul has just always been so powerful. It really has. It's been a, it's been a sleeper, but it's been so powerful for so long. Like there's just too many good cards that I didn't think I didn't think we can go wrong with Gruul today. I thought it'd be a pretty easy video for us to grab. Couple of Cinderclasms. Don't know if that's going to be that helpful against our opponent here. Um, they're ramping, so you know they're probably going to have some big things too. Might be able to shoot down a couple of Sentinels though. They have so much mana now though. Okay, actually we can hit a couple of things here. That's a that's a big board wipe if I can get to it. The only issue is they went first, which is really unfortunate. That's so much mana they have available now though. Double Sentinel with a Selfless Savior on the battlefield. But they only have four more cards in hand. I mean, they can unload their entire hand here though. That's a problem. That's a big problem because now our Cinderclasm's not gonna kill the Sentinels. Oh, if only we went first, this whole board would be completely wiped right now. But now our opponent has Creatures that are gonna get. I hope they. I hope they tap their creatures for mana here. That would be great. 
Wait, does that actually... Whenever you attack, yeah, so it's whenever they attack. <sighs> Dang it, they're gonna attack. Fair enough. It makes sense, because if they attack, they untap anyways, right? So... It makes sense. At least only one creature gets to do it. Alright. That's better than I thought. They're gonna give indestructibility to their other sentinel here from with their selfless savior, so well played. There's nothing I could do. The fact that I went second in this game absolutely just des destroys our, our whole our whole thing here. Another sparring regiment. All right. They're not doing anything crazy, crazy threatening to me right now. Like, they're hitting me with some things, but... It's... It's just frustrating. All right, let's play this and hope we hit a land off the top of the deck here. Nope, of course not. Dang it. We might have just lost here. It is what it is. It is what it is. Whenever, you know, sometimes just super unfortunate things. This entire game goes the exact opposite if we if we go first. So I'm okay losing like that. It's just one of those things. You, there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do. And we know what's on top of our deck here, which is not helpful. <laughs> not helpful in the slightest. Three damage. That's all I got to get through. Yep, that's a G and a G. Dang. What a silly, silly little deck we lost to as well, man. Dang. All right, well, on to the next one. Man, lost to a couple of Sentinels and, and a Bounty or a Selfless Savior. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy if you think about it. All right, we'll keep this all day. All day. Cultivate right until Goldspan Dragon. Don't mind if I do. So our top deck here, we don't want to see land, right? Because we have Cultivate, so... We do want to see that, though. We have not had a chance to play that yet. And we do have an Uprising. So that'll be really nice. That'll be super nice. No turn two for us. Say go. I love these new sleeves. They were in the shop today for the sale. Love them. So sick. Our opponent's a mad lad. A no sleeve mad lad. All right. We will take that. We will drop this bad boy. Goldspan Dragon coming down a turn early is always very helpful. It's gonna just gonna pump us mana like crazy. They are on black mana though, so it's always, you know, a possibility that it gets shot down. But at least it's gonna get one turn in, hopefully. Hopefully. Nope, looks like it's dead. Looks like a Heartless Act is about to say what's up. They're about to send our Goldspan Dragon to the yard. Murderous Rider, okay, that's that's also a card that does that. All good though, all good. Um, so if they're running a lot of removal, I think we go Garruk's Uprising here first. That way if we do play a creature, uh, it, it dies right away, you know? Let's at least get a little bit of value out of it, like drawing cards. So that'll be the next play. Garruk's Uprising. We'll hold up Cinderclasm. Don't know if Cinderclasm's really gonna be that helpful though. That seems kind of like a waste, but all right. Uh, I think Cinderclasm's a dead card, actually. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. A uh, part of me really just wants to play a big creature here, but I think double Garuk is nice. I was going to say there's really no way for them to get rid of enchantments. Other, You know, the creatures, they have a lot of destruction things but actually seeing dooms foretold makes me a little nervous but the fact that we can double down on the grooks uprising makes me feel a lot better they're they're gonna wish they didn't play that so soon just to get me to discard a card that was a terrible idea 
had they held on to that Doom Foretold, I would have never expected it. I would have walked right into it. A couple of 6-6 six, six creatures about to come down and do some dirty work for me. Alright, got that, got that. Give me a couple of cards here. A little two for one action. Alright, not bad. Give me a couple more cards. Har uh, Grook's Uprising acting as our, our cheaper version of a henge, which is great. Now remember, this means hexproof the black. It doesn't mean <laughs> impervious to black. Alright, so we got some Doom Foretold action here. That's fine. We could start giving up some creatures instead of... Instead of our uprisings here. It's non-token, right? Yeah, non-token. Ooh, that's not good. That's really not good. Alright, fair enough. Let's go, Gargaroth. Get us some cards here. More creatures, preferably. Alright, nice. I mean, that's something. That's something. I don't really need uh, what do I, I don't really need a second uprising, do I? I might. They got a birth they can sack here, which is so good. Damn, doom foretold, making things tricky here for us, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work. I'm definitely keeping Gargaroth though this time around, because Gargaroth can draw his cards, right? So if they have another murderous rider though, or any sort of heartless act, our Gargaroth is toast. So they've added red to the mix. Why would they need red? Why would they need red? Hmm. Maybe Tybalt? Maybe Tybalt. I don't know. I think I'm going to sacrifice Clothis here. Play the other Clothis. Um, I do need a creature off the top, though. We've been getting kind of flooded here. Low key. Low key getting kind of flooded here. There we go. Draw some cards. More land. Just what I did not want to see. Alright, so we're keeping pace. I mean, we're keeping pace with the Doom Foretold because we're drawing so many cards, right? Like, we would be in a lot of trouble here if our Uprisings weren't down. Because that Doom Foretold is just going to keep picking us apart one by one by one. But in this particular case, the fact that we have two Uprisings down, just drawing non-stop, we can keep up with the value. We have plenty of mana in the hand, too, so I'm just going to keep getting bigger every, every turn. Going to be able to play more and more every turn. 36 cards in the deck, no no danger of being milled. Not up against the mills style of a deck at all. Let's see what they do though, because again, a lot of removal in their deck. More than likely going to get Heartless Acted or Murderous Rider here. Okay. I mean, they used a lot of mana for that play, right? What's more valuable here? I think the Clothis is more valuable. No. The Quartz Word can actually block, but this can gain me life. That's the thing, right? <sighs> That's a tough decision. It really, really is. Have to go with the Quartz Word, though, because it can block. It can kill that 3-6, so at least it'll make them wary about attacking here. Save me a little bit of life. All right, got to give one of these up, unfortunately, even though it was just absolute gas for me. We're going to have to give it up. Um, boom, 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 boom. Let's drop this. We still have enough to play the Ember Cleave. Get a card. Cinderclasm. Not bad. I mean, it kills the 2-2, two -two, but... Let's get in there for an attack here. See how many... Uh, see how big we can make our little token here. See how big we can make it. No? Oh, okay. You're not going to like the outcome of that play. You're not going to like this. This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. <laughs> Yikes. All right. I mean, hey, you did it, not me. So you're going to have to sacrifice, you know, you're going to have to deal with the consequences here. All right. They're down to just a doom foretold. 
I have two seven sevens out there and another seven seven with an ember cleave right ready to attack again. So I think that's a wrap. I think. Better hope you have another one. Can't use uh can't use that on the Harbinger though, because it's hexproof to black. Yeah, you see him highlighting it? They were trying to kill it. Which means they have another removal spell, unfortunately. What could it be though? Vanishing verse. Alright. Alright. We're gonna take a pretty big shot here. That's six damage just from the token if they decide to swing, and I don't block it, of course, but um I'm going to block it. But they could kill the Harbinger. Ah, maybe not. All right, Murderous Rider, sure. Taking two. Bold strategy, Kain. Uh, I'm not going to block it now, though. Well played, well played. Taking six. I just attached the Embercleave and I win. I don't know... I don't know what their plan was there on that attack, but... All right, fair enough. Pretty sure that's a wrap. Unless I'm forgetting something here. I don't think I am. Nope, there it is. GG's, that's one of those things where I get really nervous to attack because I'm like, why would they Why would they do that? But, oh well, mistakes were made. Let's keep it rolling. Let's get to that next tier. I'm gonna... I'm gonna do my best this season to not screw up my rank. I'm really gonna work hard. I'm not experimenting on the ladder like I always do. Not experimenting new ideas. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to go to the play queue. I'm going to try to be very determined to get my rank up this season. I want to make sure I get to Mythic so you guys can see some Mythic gameplay. <sighs> land is fine. We could definitely use some more land. Oh no, we need Cinderclasm. We need Cinderclasm and we need it yesterday. That's not Cinderclasm, so it's gotta go. If it ain't Cinderclasm, it's gotta go. I might play the Harbinger down here next turn instead of Cultivate. Just to try to keep pace with these creatures here. Thank God. Okay, I thought that was gonna hit a Cinderclasm and I was gonna be super upset. Alright, at least it gives them something to think about. Do you really want to run into a, a Harbinger? You know, do you want to make that trade? We'll see. Again, if they hit a Cinderclasm off the top, you might as well, <laughs> might as well say goodbye because we lost. This is the one matchup that made me a little weary when I made this deck. A little bit nervous, but looks like we did slow them down. They're they're thinking here. I don't. I they didn't play a land, so maybe they're short on land and they're trying to figure out which two drop to play. All right, Harbinger did its job. Harbinger did its job. All right, let's play the Uprising. There's a card. Nice, Clothis is actually really good here. It's life gaining. Um, if I attack here, I do get to go and get a creature card, but I think I'd rather hold it back for blocks here because they're gonna let it go through. Oh, it's Annex. It's Annex, huh? All right, so. Oh, wow, still no attacks, though. I thought for sure there'd be an attack there. In that case, we'll play a 6-6. Six, six. In that case, we will play the 6-6. Six, six. The issue is, is the 1-1s one that they're going to be generating here on the attacks, and the other issue is Embercleave, right? So we'll try our best here not to... Walk into anything silly. Next turn, we could play Clothis and we can even cultivate, or we could play Clothis and Harbinger. Both, by the way, this has six loyalty already. Both would come into the battlefield as creatures. Robber of the Witch. Okay, so they're just trying to go a little wider here. They're probably not going to attack again because that means no Embercleave, right? Oh, they're going for it. They're going for it, huh? 
No Ember Cleave, but I mean, they could Rimrock Knight us here, which would be a little bit annoying. Or Shock. Or Frostbite. One of those three. Rimrock Knight it is. I'll take that trade. I'll take that trade. We, we killed their Annex, so I mean, we'll take it. Let's play the Harbinger first. Loyalty back up. This comes in hopefully as a creature and then draws this card. So there's a very specific reason why I played it in that order. If you play Clothis first, it would have came out as an enchantment. We would have not gotten the card off the Garruk's Uprising. So we had to get our loyalty up here first, then play the Clothis to get it out as a creature. Next turn, we fry all their little creatures and pretty much GG's. Keep them coming. Yep, there you go. That's another one toughness. Keep them coming. There we go. You're not going to like this next play, my friend. <sighs> this next play is really going to upset you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but that's exactly why it's in the deck for you. I... I... <laughs> Special handcrafted that one for you, Mono Red. Oh, you'd love to see it. Poor, poor Mono Red. Nothing you can do against the Center Clasm, my friend. Nothing you can do. No one expects it. It's just one of those cards, man. Just happened to fit almost about as perfect as a card could fit into a deck. So. Up against the V-dubs. Man, everybody likes this little mosquito creature. I don't know why. It's kind of gross if you ask me. Jess guy. Oh boy, are we up against a control matchup? If that's the case, our Cinderclasm is useless. Absolutely useless, but we'll see. We have a Rada, which is really nice. We can play that next turn and then hopefully start playing some lands off the top of our deck. It's basically always having an extra card, which is nice. Next card is a uh, forest. We play the questing beast, get him for seven. That's a pretty hefty shot. It's a pretty hefty shot. We got to start worrying about counter, counter magic now, though. Nope, never mind. Just kidding. Questing Beast is definitely going to land here. The uh, the only thing I got to worry about then is board wipes, actually. Got to worry about Doomscar. Doomscar. Our worst nightmare. That wall is annoying, but it's whatever. If they end up blocking the Rada with it instead, I'll Cinderclasm it to death. Because we're really not going to have any great targets for the Cinderclasm, so might as well, right? I guess... No, we're not going to do that because we go over the top with Goldspan Dragon. That would be silly. That would be silly. So let's go over the top. And then we can Cinderclasm because we're going to get the Goldspan Dragon's token. Into the Royal. Ugh. Disgusting. All right, let's see if they block with that wall of theirs. They sure do. Cinderclasm. No walls in front of me now, my friend. What are you going to do about that questing beast coming down next turn? So you think. Little do they know, it's actually going to be a gold span dragon coming down. Okay. Stealing my gold span. I see how it is. They are ramped up with that clock, so they got a little extra mana jump there. Um, only four cards in hand, though. Three mana open. Saw it coming is definitely a possibility. Nope, never mind. It's not anymore. Can our opponent be any more annoying, though? All right, Rada back down. Let's see what we got off the top of our deck. A Grook's Harbinger next turn. All right, so we can play the Questing Beast for four. And if we find a land on the top of our deck with Rada, we can play the uh, Grook as well. I'm still afraid of the Doomscar, though. It's definitely a real possibility here. We did find a land. Let's just do this first because it has haste. 
Swing in. Let's not commit the Garouk yet until we know what the heck they're trying to do to us. Oh, banish into Fable. I love it. All right. That card is nasty. We did get a treasure token, though, which is a beautiful thing. Um, wow, we got got there. Well played. Well played. Banishing the Fable. They hit us with a clock followed by Banishing Light. That's a... Dude, I'm telling you, that card is sick. Absolutely sick. If you guys don't know, I've had two Banish the Fable decks uh, posted here on the channel. Give them a look sometime because they are pretty beasty. Opponent ran out of juice though. Unfortunately, they had no more answers to go. Feels bad, man. I like their deck though. Very cool. That's going to do it for today's gameplay footage. I hope you all enjoyed the list and I hope you enjoyed the games as well. Um, like I said, there's not much to be said about this deck. It has so much value on the top end that, you know, almost no opponent's going to be able to deal with you once you get to late game. The aggression, the value of drawing cards, the trample value, it's just all of it is just too much to, to deal with. Board sweepers are really the only thing that are going to catch you off guard and really kick your butt. Um, but even then, if you have a couple groups uprisings out, you're going to be able to rebuild pretty quickly. So I like the deck a lot. I think it's fairly simple to win with. I don't know why I don't play more decks like this because it really does, you know, only help my ranking, especially in best of one. These like powerful creature based mid range type decks usually do really well in best of one type games. So enjoy. I know this list will get you guys a couple of wins if you want to craft. So definitely feel free to do so. Um, and then I just want to ask if you guys have any questions about the deck or if you guys have any ideas, especially for the deck, let me know down in the comments below. I'd like to read all of those and eventually I'll get back to all of you when I have some time. But um, want to hear your thoughts. If you have any ways to change this deck to make it a little bit better, definitely let me know. Um, as far as the synergistic of uh, uh, the deck and everything that you know coincides together, the only card that doesn't fit perfectly is Rada. But again, I, I during my, um, during after the recording, it was after the recording, I think, yeah, I played a couple of games and I was able to use Rada's combat trick and it's really good. I'm going to keep this in the deck for sure. But it doesn't draw a card with Grooks Uprising. And it just doesn't seem to fit perfectly into the deck. And that's really the only thing I have to say about the deck. This could be probably switched out for something else. But other than that, the deck is pretty spot on perfect. And I'm enjoying it a lot. So let me know your thoughts though, as always, in the comments below. And lastly, if you guys have made it this far into the video, Thank you so much to you for helping out this video and the algorithm because the longer you watch, the more it pumps out my videos to more people. So thank you so, so much. And thank you to all of my YouTube members. I'll be putting your names on the screen now, but thank you all so much for becoming members of my channel. And uh, I hope you guys are all enjoying the free exclusive content. If you want to become a member today, you can hit that little join button down below. Also, there is a link in the description below if you don't see a join button. Uh, for those Apple iPhone users. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, it means the world to me that you guys are, you know, able and willing to support my channel financially. It does mean the world to me and it helps us get ever so closer to our goal of doing this full time for you guys. So again, can't say thank you enough. That's going to do it for today's video. Today is going to be Wednesday when this comes out. So I will see you guys tonight on the live stream. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you then. Until next time. Peace. Hit him three times like a hat trick. Yeah. The name is Fizzy you No know Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic, yeah, that's magic. Yeah. Ooh. MTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh. Man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks, but the meta. This ain't cheap, yeah, it's custom to cheddar.